In this video, we're going to cover how to set up and use agency-based theme colors inside of Oxygen. We'll get started here at the theme colors plugin settings page. And the basic concept behind agency-based theme colors is to generate a set of CSS variables that are global. You can use them across the entire site and to generate a set of color derivatives for each color that you want to use them on. And these can be either shade or opacity derivatives. So they can be partially transparent or a shade adjustment. And what's, what this does, it lets you use the shades and opacities in your designs and easily update the root color and all of these will update along with it. So for each of these colors in here, the plugin is going to generate a CSS variable with this name and for all the derivatives it's going to add this suffix to the end of it. So to enable derivatives you can just click here and set up the derivatives. The plugin ships with a set of defaults on I think most of these colors here that you see. So, um, and I am working on the ability to add some of these derivative sets in automatically. But for now, um, you can always export a JSON file and copy and paste new colors in if you don't want to go through and set up each one of these individually here, the color derivatives. So with that explained, let's jump into the Oxygen Editor. And this is the first panel that opens by default. And you can see I only have the derivative colors turned on for the first color here, I believe. So none of those will get loaded in here or in the front end CSS file unless it's enabled, like this primary theme currently has the derivative colors enabled. And once you're done with the design, you can also come through and delete all of these that you're not using just to eliminate some of that CSS bloat on the front end if you're concerned about that. So it's very easy to use. You simply click to copy the variable name, come over here, and let's just set this to the background color, paste that in. Um, one thing to note, in Oxygen, you can use CSS variables inside of any color fields in Oxygen. This is a little bit different than the sizing tabs where we cannot use CSS variables because of the predefined units. So just a note there. So on the background, let's actually jump back to the primary and then we can also grab a light text variable that we have set up already. I'm using the new keyboard shortcuts that I just added in version 2.1.3 and I have mine set up Alt Q to open the tab and escape closes the agency based sidebar panel. So let's paste this in here. Let's add a heading. And now we've got a section set up with our primary theme color and our light text. So let's save that. Let's go ahead and view this on the front end. And now what we can do is, let's, let's actually make this a little bit more interesting. Let's go ahead and add in um, another section. And let's set the background color of this to a slightly different shade of our primary theme color. So let's go a little bit darker maybe, just to see what this looks like. And let's set this to, there we go. Don't take any of what I do in these videos as good design practice or anything like that because I am not much of a designer. So now in here, let's go ahead and set another 
Okay, I'm going to switch this up here a little bit. I'm going to choose a 60% darker variable for the text. And then I'm actually, yeah, let's leave it like that maybe. Refresh this. And now let's come back in here and let's make a change to our primary theme. Let's say we want to make this m rather a shade of blue, for example. Save those settings, make sure the static CSS file gets saved and do a force refresh here. And as you can see, this follows along now. So all of the derivative colors follow the root color that we've set up here. So it makes it a quick, easy way to change a bunch of colors site-wide. And this, this is especially handy you know, if you're just building a single oxygen site, there's nothing wrong with the oxygen global color systems. If it's a simple site and um, it's quick and easy and it's built in, this would more come into use, in my opinion, if you're building a set of template sites, for example, or maybe your own design library, because it makes it easy to tie everything together. Because we're not limited to just using these CSS variables inside of oxygen's color fields, we can also write custom CSS. So we could, um, let's just add another section. And we can, of course, use these inside of our custom CSS tab. So we could go background color and grab our secondary theme color here and paste this in. And now we'll have this just the same in here. And then we could also set color and set this to light text again. Set in, collapse that, and add in another. Let's add in some text this time. Good enough. Come back, view this on the front end. One thing that you're seeing here is that the color changes haven't propagated through to the editor and that's because we have not reloaded the editor yet since we made the changes in here. So this will not live reload. These are just standard CSS variables and you'd have to reload the page here just like anything else for these new CSS variables to get applied. So. Anytime you make changes to the color settings in agency base, you will need to refresh the oxygen editor for those to get picked up inside of here. All right, let's keep going and explore a few other locations that you can use this. So let's add in a few pieces. Let, let me see, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these to get them out of the way. And let's add in a few sections from a design library. So let's just drop in Atomic and let's start off with a header. So I'm just going to grab this one. Now, as soon as we bring this in, if we come to settings, global styles, colors, of course, we will see the new atomic color set here. And what's an interesting thing to note here is my understanding of how oxygen global color IDs work is that these get added on a first come first serve basis. So depending on what order you bring in blocks from different design libraries, the, glo the global colors are going to get assigned IDs starting from, I believe, looks like one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like you're starting from one. Um, if we go ahead and add in another, let's choose one from a different library now. Um, let's just go here. And we need a 
hero. So let's bring this one right here in. Now, if we jump back here, we're going to see our second color set. And it looks like we're taking off straight from five and going on up six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So that's my understanding of how that works. If we would have brought this section in from the SAS library first, it would have started at ID one and so on and so forth. So like I said before, this is great for a small site, no issue. But if you're going to be building this into a design library, for example, it can get a little bit dicey because you're not in complete control over what your color IDs are named. So although you can use these color IDs in uh, custom style sheets or external style sheets that you're loading through something else, um, there's no guarantee that that color ID is going to be the color that you expect it will be on the next site that you set up with this design library. So that was one of the things that influenced agency based theme colors because it gives you an option to build using just standard CSS variables and know without a doubt that those are going to stay the same across every site that you use them on. So you could take this and build a design library around the CSS variables generated by agency base and have a solid base, no pun intended, um, for your design set. The one interesting thing that you can do with CSS variables is you can actually tie the color themes from multiple libraries together. So we could say that we want to start using our agency base theme colors. So let's grab our primary theme here and let's come here to this and we're using atomic primary B here. So let's go to our atomic global color settings and this is primary B. So this isn't going to look, look look great, but I'm just going to do it anyways here. Um, let's just set the primary, I guess, to this global variable. You can see that picks up. And let's grab our secondary theme and drop that one in here. And you can see that picks up that. And now let's start tying this in with our second design library. So let's look at this. So we've got a background color of lavender. Um, maybe this wasn't the best one to show as an example, but we'll do our best here. Um, trying to figure out where this styling is coming from. So we've got a text link. We've got a class of SAS primary button. Got a text color there. And custom CSS. Linear gradient. There we go. So like I said, this isn't just the greatest example. Um, And they're actually using color variables here, it looks like. So we could go ahead and replace these um, color 10 and color 11. We could actually just leave this, cust this custom CSS completely set up as it is and simply override colors 10 and 11 in the global settings. So let's give that a try quick. So we've got 10 and 11 right here. Let's see what happens. Again, like I said, this probably isn't going to look that great. Um, but let's just do 
uh, primary accent and secondary accent here. All right, and yep, there we go. That looks like that is taking effect. It's overriding the color IDs here with our new global CSS variables.